Hey everyone, my name is Sarah Levon and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You have been asking for years for this video and honestly, I didn't even really wanna talk about it because I haven't personally used it myself or with a client, but I recently heard a story of someone that took the midwives brew drink and then they had their baby quickly thereafter. So here I am and we're gonna talk about it because I think if it's gonna help you get your baby out and get you unpregnant, which is what most of you guys want, then I am here to help you do that. And so today I'm gonna to be talking all about the infamous midwives brew drink, what's in it, what are the risks and benefits, what to expect if you decide to try it, and anything else I come up with in the meantime. But before I do that, make sure you subscribe down below, turn on your notification bell so you never miss a future video, make sure you share it with your pregnant friends that are trying not to be pregnant anymore, and then let's get started. I had never heard of the midwives brew. I wanna call it a tea, but it's like a drink that supposedly helps you get into labor. I hadn't heard about it at all until I became a birth coach and got more in the like holistic land of birth coaching, doulas, midwives, home births, birth center births, et cetera. I'd only ever been in the hospital and I'd never seen a patient come in who had taken this midwives brew. And so, I sort of was avoiding talking about it because I didn't feel necessarily comfortable, but over the last few years, I like, I've seen it, I've heard about you guys using it, you guys have been asking me for it, and so finally I'm like, ugh, what the heck, let's have a conversation. So there really isn't, I have to say a couple of things, anytime we're talking about ingesting anything, as usual, my disclaimer still stays nice and strong, meaning to make sure you talk to your provider before you ingest anything at all. Now, what I will say is that the ingredients in this drink are like pretty basic. The key ingredient is castor oil, and so I'll talk about that. But in general, this stuff like you, in theory, should be able to drink, but make sure you check in with your provider. The other thing is, is that any time that we are trying to induce labor, which that is exactly what the midwives brew tea says and claims to be. And I know there's so many things that you guys are probably trying that maybe you're anticipating trying that you've heard other people do to try to get you into labor. And I know that it is so hard to wait at the end. Every day feels like it's the longest day of your life when you're trying to really have your baby. And so I get it, I understand. I also have two other videos. One of them is can I induce labor naturally? And the other one is how to induce labor naturally. And so I'm gonna give you like a very quick summary of the first one because I wanna be very clear that when you're trying to get yourself into labor, you can do all the things in the world and there's no guarantee that it's gonna work for you. If there was some magic concoction of a midwife's brew drink that got you into labor, I mean, everybody would be doing it, providers would be recommending it, and we wouldn't have people going till 42 weeks pregnant or 41 weeks pregnant or 40 weeks pregnant at least, right? So there is this certain kind of general basis that when you're trying to get yourself into labor, it really does matter how ready your body, body already is. And sometimes you can drink something, you can do something, watch that video for all my suggestions, and you may end up kind of, that might be like the push your body needs to get yourself into labor, but otherwise just prepare yourself for the side effects and hold your hands open to flex and flow based on how you feel and what your body does because it may or may not work. But if you wanna try it and your provider says it's okay, what's in the midwives brew drink? All it is would be 10 ounces of apricot juice. I've never had apricot juice. I almost went to the store in preparation for this video and then I just decided not to because I was feeling lazy and just wanted to get it out to you. <laughs> but apricot juice doesn't sound super gross, but it also doesn't sound super delicious. So let me know what you think of apricot juice in the description box down below. I'll put some links in my pregnancy list maybe on Amazon for you guys to try out some stuff and all the ingredients will be there, linked down below as well. Um, so 10 ounces of apricot juice, eight ounces of pure lemon yerbena tea. So eight ounces is just a cup. You would brew the tea and let it sit for a while because especially with tea, you really want it to seep out all of its juicy goodness, herbful goodness into the tea in order to feel better about it. So you wanna brew the tea. It would be two tablespoons of castor oil, which in milliliters, is it 30 or 20 mLs in a tablespoon? Hold on, let me see. 
So two tablespoons of castor oil is technically 30 mLs of castor oil. And the castor oil is the um, active ingredient. It's the one that's really probably what's doing the magic if it's doing any kind of magic. And then two tablespoons of almond butter. And I read somewhere that they think that the castor oil adheres to the almond butter in your intestines and has better absorption that way. I mean, when I think about like how intense your digestive acids are, I'm like, eh, maybe, maybe not. Like, bleh, flex and flow on that one, okay? So basically you would take those four ingredients, you would blend it up, and then you would drink it on an empty stomach because you kind of want to like irritate the intestines. And then you see what happens. So typically what people would report, this is mostly anecdotal because we really don't have data on this, okay? So that I also will say very clearly, that there really isn't like a full meta-analysis of all the women who did it versus didn't do this midwives brew to see what happened. Mind you, the little data we do have, there is evidence like, and by evidence, I mean like a small amount of evidence that the ones who drank it went into labor within 24 hours more often than who didn't. And that also can be related to castor oil ingestion, ingestion so or taking in castor oil. So what are the risks with castor oil in general? I don't know of any risks unless you're like allergic to almonds or apricots or urbana, lemon urbana tea, then please don't do this or castor oil, please don't do this. But castor oil is a laxative. And so when you drink this, I feel like it probably makes it more ingestible to drink it when you have the castor oil with other things because castor oil on its own is like plastic. Like it is so nasty and the greasy, like if you ever done oil pulling, like you like slosh the oil in your mouth, it's so gross. And so it probably makes it a lot more ingestible, but with castor oil, the risk is nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, and then that could lead to de dehydration. So it's really GI upset symptoms. So expect that if you were to take castor oil alone or if you were to do the midwives brew tea, thingy, then you're probably going to feel nauseous versus when they looked at like the very few studies they had. I think there's like three, if I remember correctly. It's not very many. Either way, it doesn't matter. It's not significant data, but like almost a hundred percent of the women who took the midwives brew tea or castor oil felt nausea and, nausea and or vomited and or had diarrhea because castor oil is a laxative. And anytime we have diarrhea or we're like Nausea, with not, well, not so much nausea, but if we vomit, then the risk is dehydration and dehydration can lead to premature contractions. And so what I would say is, if you're intending to do this, make sure you prehydrate a lot. So you're nice and hydrated. How do you know that you're hydrated? Is you pee almost clear and then do it. If you have diarrhea, just make sure you're like, drinking your water because your uterus is a very sensitive muscle. And so if you're dehydrated, a lot of times it will cause contractions, but dehydration contractions aren't real contractions. And so we want real contractions out of this versus having contractions for no reason. And that's just, that's no good, no fun. Okay. So it's neutral as far as when they looked at, again, these small studies on whether you had a higher chance of a vaginal birth or a C-section, super neutral. We just know that like it may within 24 hours help to get you into labor. And the risk is pretty low versus the reward. If it gets you into labor, in theory, that's that's good, right? That's what we want. The other thing about castor oil is that they think the reason why it works because there's this active ingredient in it called rhino, rhinoleic acid that activates your prostaglandin receptors, which you have these like receptors. Imagine I like to describe them as doors. I don't remember what video I was talking about pitocin or oxytocin receptors and they're like your doors being open or closed. Basically you have these like hormone receptors that are like hormones come to me. And when the hormone hits it, it's like, let's do the work. And so with prostaglandin, that's gonna soften out your cervix. And when your prostaglandin is released, then that goes to your brain and can trigger your oxytocin to be released, which brings on contractions and that puts pressure on your cervix, which releases more prostaglandin. It's this whole big feedback loop. Either way, the, the moral of the story is that it does, or they think, that it activates some of your labor hormones, which could help induce contractions or bring on contractions. But that goes for both in the uterus and then also in the intestines. And they saw this in rats. So I don't believe we have any human studies on this. Pregnant people are really hard to study. So we basically have animal studies and or 
anecdotal st studies, I don't know if you call those a study, but like anecdotal evidence or anecdotal data, meaning people's stories. So people would say, yeah, I took this castor oil. I started to have some cramping. It also is in your intestines because it goes to the, it goes through the intestines and is that has that laxative effect. So again, nausea, vomiting expected, but it may trigger your prostaglandin receptors. And the chances that you go into labor, um, I will say though, with, when we look at the data for how much castor oil it takes, the recommended amount diagnosed by your provider, not by me, okay, do it at your own risk, is 60 mLs. And so that concoction, you would technically have to double it, right? Because 30, it says 15 in a teaspoon, tablespoon. I can't do math. There's 15 mLs in a tablespoon, two tablespoons, 30 times two, so you double the castor oil or double the amount and throw it back and see what happens. If you have taken midwife's brew or maybe castor oil, I would love to hear your experience down below. For other people, we can all share our stories on whether or not it worked. Again, this is very anecdotal, very much like a I'm desperate, let's try something option, so long as your provider approves it and says that it's okay. And then hopefully within 24 hours, you end up going into labor and having your baby and it was that final push that your body needed even though you had to ingest this like probably very nasty, that would be a good YouTube video too or like Instagram video. I may make it someday and see what happens to me. If you want that, let me know. <laughs> but you ingest it and then you have your baby within the next little bit. Thank you everyone for being with me here today. If you want more from me, you can head on over to bundlebirth.com. I'll have all sorts of things in the description box down below, so make sure you check that out. Make sure you follow me on Instagram because there's lots more going on over there all the time to supplement these YouTube videos. And then make sure you subscribe, click that notification bell, share it with your friends, like I said, with your pregnant people that are all trying to have their babies, and let me know how it goes with your midwives brew brew concoction that you throw back and hopefully stimulates your labor. And then until next time, don't forget to flex and flow and I will see you soon. Bye. Go and you'll probably poop a lot. You will poop a lot. <laughs> it sounds really witchy actually. <laughs> and you might throw up. It's brewing. It's brews your baby. Why do they call it midwives brew? Ugh, my thing isn't connected.